for safety days 2023, uh, safety culture with PCL construction. My name is Rob Peace. I'm a departmental assistant in mechanical engineering. I am an alumni of the College of Engineering and a member of the local safety committee. The local safety committee in engineering is part of the Occu occupational health and safety program on campus and assists with safety management and reporting in the college. It's my pleasure to be here kicking off safety days with this session and I want to thank PCL for supporting this event as a sponsor and for participating with their industry knowledge and offering that to students. As we begin this week and another virtual safety days, I want to start off with our USASC land acknowledgement together. As we virtually gather today, we acknowledge we are on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis. We pay our respect to the First Nation and Métis ancestors of this place and reaffirm our relationship with one another. And now, before I introduce uh, Trish Gibney, a brief in, uh, introduction by Dean Cresta. So she's recorded a short video. Hello, second year students, and welcome to Safety Days. I am delighted to welcome you back to the college. I am delighted to open the doors into what I think is going to be an engaging and interesting week for all of you. We've organized safety days this year around the medicine wheel, which we always do, because when we have our own medicine wheel in balance, we are looking after our spiritual, emotional, intellectual, and physical needs. When those things are in balance, we're better able to function, to stay present in the moment, and to keep ourselves and the people around us safe. What you'll find when you go out into the workplace is that this is the top priority for all of your employers. When we operate safely, we operate better, we deliver better outcomes, and we work better with our employees and our financial constraints. You're gonna hear a variety of speakers over the next few days. You're gonna engage with each other. You're gonna have a few little quizzes along the way to make sure you've been paying attention. And at the end of it, I hope that you will have, you come away a little bit more open, a little bit more curious, and most important, we want to make sure that you're equipped when you go out into the workplace to bring the values of safety and responsibility into your work terms, into your summer jobs, and you become a great team member, and great engineers. Thanks for joining us. All right, so it is now my great pleasure to introduce Trish Gibney with PCL Construction. Uh, she is a safety professional with 15 years of experience in safety and over 20 years in construction. She holds the designations of Applied Science Technologist and is a certified registered safety professional. She has risen through the PCL ranks. And is... Sorry, I'm just going to... Just to remind people, if you could please mute. Um, so Trish has risen through the PCL ranks and is now the Health, Safety, Environment Manager for the Saskatoon District. She also serves as a member of the Saskatchewan Safety Council Board of Directors and a variety of other volunteer communities. Thank you, Trish, for joining us today. I'll now hand it over to you for your presentation. Thank you, Rob. I am very happy to be back again. Thank you for inviting me again this year. Uh -huh. Two, there we go. Take that share screen. So uh, I've done this a couple of times over, and that there we are. All right. Um, it's a pleasure every time. Um, if anybody has questions, comments as we go through things, don't hesitate. Shout them out as we go, and um, 
Helen and Rob are going to help out in the background there. I have lost the chat button. So uh, Helen, Rob, if you don't mind, if there's something that pops up, shout it out as we go. Um, or I'm more than happy to answer questions at the end of the presentation. I will also very happily share my email address so that anybody uh, that would like to contact me afterwards and pick my brain a little bit, uh, very, very happy to do so. so. I am going to uh, kick off here. Um, as Robert said, I have been in the construction industry in one way, shape or form for 20-ish years. Uh, I started out as a civil technologist and uh, found another path for myself into health and safety, still very related to construction. Uh, construction is what makes my heart go pitter patter. Um, and this just kind of gave me a little bit of a different insight on a, a different way to look at things. Um, PCL, I've been here since 2008, uh, worked up through the team, uh, and now I sit in the HSC manager seat for the Saskatoon district. Um, my role, at the end of the day, I help our operations team and our trades plan and execute our projects so that they can work effectively and efficiently and deliver projects to our owners that we can all be proud of. Um, I've been asked to speak today specifically about safety culture. Having sat on both sides of the fence, so to speak, I've been given the opportunity to gather some perspectives on workplace cultures, both from construction and the engineering viewpoints. I'm trying to shut my camera off. It's just not working for me. There we go. All right. Now, uh, off we go. So, we often hear organizational culture or workplace culture referred to as the way that we do things here. It can be very tangible items like a safety, safety share at the beginning of a meeting or the CEO of a company making job site visits, wearing all the correct pieces of safety gear. It is definitely the intangible things like acknowledging leading indicators such as training opportunities and safety inspections. Details like mutual respect, consideration of others, motivation and team spirit are also all pieces that build workplace culture. The maturity of a culture in a workplace mirrors other phases of being. It starts out as a dependent culture, it becomes interdependent, independent and then finally an independent. Workplaces with a strong and healthy culture understand and encourage a team environment where it is understood that no person can do it all. I am speaking today to the designers and the dreamers and the visionaries of our very near future. So how do you as new people in a workplace and fresh new minds in our industry influence and affect the culture in a workplace, a safety, especially a safety culture? Safety culture and overall workplace culture is all about the leaders, both formal and informal. You will quickly come to learn personality of new workplaces. You will also come in time to teach that personality to those who come after you. In a good, healthy workplace and in good, healthy culture, uh, do people feel a sense of responsibility for each other? Is there a shared accountability? Do people support each other for being cautious about safety or do they ridicule one another for not taking chances? How do people react when things don't go as planned? Safety culture, sorry, do the known practices and procedures get brought into play or do the wheels fall off the motorhome and people in white respirators start rolling out and everybody gets blamed because nothing went right? Now, at this point, you're thinking to yourself, I'm gonna be an engineer, not a safety person. Aren't there people who look after those things? And you're not totally wrong in your thinking. There are people who can teach you a whole new set of skills to make you an ultimately better rounded and a wiser professional. And then you in turn can take all of that knowledge and make the personality of your workplace better. Make note of the items you appreciate or that work well for you. Make note of the things that rub you or raise the hair on the back of your neck. Remember these things as you rise and grow. So let's step back a wee little bit 
from strictly your chosen profession and building in, talk about building in the extra components to make you the professional that is just a little bit better than the rest. Well, this doesn't speak specifically to culture. As I said earlier, these are some of the things that will make you stand out as a leader. And it's leaders in the workplace that lead the culture and influence the culture in the workplace. To be a safety leader does not mean that you need to know everything that there is to know about safety. There are some things that you do need to know. First and foremost, you need to be willing to understand safety and how it fits into your role. It is not someone else's job. Safety is a piece of every single one of our jobs. One of the most valuable pieces of professional advice I was given was there is no job that is not your job. That doesn't mean that you need to be an expert in every scope of work. You don't need to know the Occupational Health and Safety Act and the, the regulations and related supplements and standards verbatim. But you do need to know that they exist and who the person is to go to when you need information about them. This applies to both you and your workplace, as well as new workplaces you're going to design and build. You also need to know what your rights and responsibilities are as a worker and as a professional. So the next piece of wisdom I will share with you is listen to your spidey sense, listen to your gut. You have knowledge and skills and experience for you, from your life as you know it. You are also gaining knowledge, skills and experience on a daily basis. Coming into a new workplace with fresh eyes, don't assume the way things are done is always the right way or the best way. I always advise our new people that come into our office and, and come to our project sites, bring out your inner three-year-old and ask why, and then ask why again, and then ask why again, until you understand and it makes things feel right. Next up is build safety in. Don't let it be a standalone ent entity. Don't make it be quality and productivity and safety and budget. Build them all together so that safety is a part of every piece. Be mindful with your designs and your plans. What you will learn within the institution that you are attending right now are the technical bits and the theories about what makes a good structure or a good system. What you need to learn once you leave there is how to make all those workable, thoughtful end results. So a case in point. Now in your minds, draw a mechanical room. This mechanical room is 24 inches high with a one meter wide corridor that leads to the main area of the room. The access door into this area is about 30 inches wide. So if we have light bulbs at the very, very top of that 24 inch high roof. How does a maintenance person get on top of the equipment or up to that ceiling to get at those light bulbs? The door isn't wide enough to get a man lift in. 24 inches, or sorry, 24 feet high, you're gonna have somebody up on a ladder and it's gonna be wobbly and it's gonna be sketchy. So take some time and be thoughtful with your design. Let's take enough and stand back. There never seems to be enough time to do things right the first time, but we always find time to do it over when it gets screwed up the first time or the second time. So at what cost? Something else down the line is effective. If we do things the right time, make changes to the plan if we have to, things don't always go as you envision them. And then even then when you've set out to the most minute detail, it's important that you have a backup plan in your pocket. That may simply be reshuffling a couple of people or a couple of components, or it can be calling everyone out of the swimming pool while you regroup. In this particular situation, perhaps using catwalks at the top uh, to access the, the ductwork and the electrical work that's up on the ceiling. Things like that, that we build in ahead of time and put yourself in the space and envision yourself working in the space rather than I have these pieces and these components and they all need to go in this footprint. Make it workable. Make safety a habit. If you look at the OHS regulations, 
safety covers a lot of scopes of work and even more components of that work. There are sections in the regulations and in the OHS legislation that speak specifically to targeted work environments such as oil, gas, forestry, healthcare. There are even more sections that target components of every workplace we spend time in. If you think that you are designing and managing just to code that covers your area of practice is adequate, then you're missing pieces. For example, the building code talks about rise and run on stairs and what point a break in elevation is required. OHS regulations then add on and they say that when you hit a, a certain height or when you have a certain number of steps, you need handrails for those stairs. We can break it down even further. When we talk in safety about hazards and risks, we use a hierarchy of controls. We start with elimination or substitution. So we want to get rid of a hazard entirely. If we can't get rid of it, we substitute in another project, product, another process, something different. Then we move down to engineering. So we put guardrails in place. We put um, nets in place, that type of thing. And then the administration, and the administration is the written practices, the procedures, the documentation behind things. And finally, we land up on personal protective equipment. So things like hard hats and safety glasses and gloves. So if we are working at a structure with high ceilings, like we talked about, what about using catwalks? or engineer in a way that the items that require maintenance can drop down or have valves at chest height instead of at ceiling height. Then we can get even simpler and look directly at your immediate work area. Egress and access routes, are they kept clear? Are they lit in the event of a power outage? Is it easy to find safety items? It is easy to find safety items to focus on daily. Be curious about things outside of your role. It is suggested that to build a habit, you need to repeat a behavior every day for at least 21 days. Some habits seem to form much easier. Regardless, if safety truly is a part of everything you and your organization claim to do, then building the habit of taking stock of safety items on a daily basis should eventually come naturally. Get involved, actively engaged. You do not learn how things are really built from the chair of your office or watching TikTok videos or community cubicle farms. Take your thoughts into the field and talk to the people who are executing what you have imagined. Building is a team sport. In order to achieve an end product, it takes a lot of different people. Find out where your seemingly small piece fits into the big picture. Share your thoughts and learn from each other. There is a very fine line between dreams and brilliance and ideals that go into an amazing piece of engineering, and then the bull snot and the barbecue sauce that actually goes into executing these visions. In the very same way you are excited to tell people all the things you do and the things that you have learned, craftspeople love to share what they know. They are fiercely proud of the work that they do, and when they are asked, they are very happy to share. So talk to them about the things that work. Talk about the things that don't work. Ask what can be better. Ask what can be done differently. And then ask them what are the things that they would never ever like to do again if they had the choice. With that engagement piece also comes being a good communicator. It gets you out, it gets you seen, that you have your face in the crowd and you stand out a tiny little bit because you've engaged them in the conversation. So then when it comes back around and they have a problem or they have an issue, they don't just shuffle it or push it off to the side, figure it out and deal with it. They've had a conversation with you. They know they can talk to you. So they will come to you and they will ask questions of you and they will pick your brain on what was your intent behind this and how were you thinking when you did this and can we do it differently or can we do it better? So adapt your skills so that you can speak to the C-suite as well as the boots on the ground. Leaders are accessible, open, and honest. Never think for a moment that you know it all. If there is ever a single day that goes by that you have not learned something new, you've wasted a day. Ask questions, ask why, and then ask why again. If someone asks you a question, give them an honest answer. If that answer happens to be, I don't know, that's an honest answer. 
if a plain I don't know makes you uncomfortable, then rephrase it with, I'm not sure, but I will find out. And then go and find out and come back and follow up again. Leaders always act with integrity. Do it right every time. When I reflect on this myself, I ask myself the question, is this something that would make my grandmothers proud of me? Don't ever assume that you have it better or worse than the person next to you. You must also sometimes accept that no matter how above average you may be, you might not always be exceptional. Don't take corners to attempt to hide this. Use it as another opportunity to learn and make yourself better rounded professional. Despite what the person standing next to you may look like or how they may speak or what their life story is, they have each got their own pieces of knowledge and wisdom and their place in this world. Every one of us brings different thoughts and perspectives to the table. We do not all need to be equals. That in truth would make the world quite dull, but there is nothing wrong with equitable opportunities for everyone. And lastly, building a strong safety culture in a workplace is really quite similar to building a structure or a system. It is made up of bits and pieces all assembled together in the right configuration. The pieces of responsibility, ownership, curiosity, communication, focus, change management, engagement, accessibility, and integrity not only build an overall strong culture, the balance between safety and production and quality will also strengthen. I have found in all of the years that I've been in construction and all of the years that I've been in construction safety specifically, if you dive into it, it is very, very rare that a company with a poor overall safety culture will have an, a culture of quality and production and being on time and on budget. One component always affects the other in this in one way or another. It's like the three-legged milk stool. If one of those legs is not strong, then the stool is going to tip. Strong leaders, both formal and informal, combined with engaged employees, will build and maintain pillars necessary to sustain a healthy culture. Does anybody have questions? For, for questions, if you could, you could raise your hand or you can type it in the chat if you, if you don't want to speak and then we can read out your question. Um, if you're uncomfortable sending it to everyone, you can do a private message to me um, or uh, Trish or uh, any of the other hosts. So. I left lots and lots of time at the end for questions. So. If anybody's got anything that they want to bounce around. It appears I've awed and amazed you all and given you all of the answers. I like that. Ah, what if you are asked to do something unsafe? Thank you for stepping up. So we as employees in Saskatchewan and every worker in Saskatchewan has three rights. We have the right to know, we have the right to participate and we have the right to refuse. So if we feel that we have been assigned a task that is either ultimately going to result in harm to ourselves, harm to our, uh, someone else, damage to equipment, damage to property, we have the right to refuse that task. There is a, a respectful way of going about it. And as I said earlier, ask lots of questions. So if you've been asked to do something and you, you're just not comfortable with it, you don't understand it, you don't feel either you've got the right training for it or, or the right pieces or, or the right tools, 
go to your supervisor and say, I don't understand this. Can you please explain this to me? I'm not comfortable with this. And I know it sounds very, very simple, but that's, that's exactly where it needs to start. It starts with a conversation and it starts with the questions. Could over safety regulations hamper an effective work, causing an official way and an actual way? Timmons, it sounds like maybe you've spent a little bit of time on a construction site. Um, so, yes, there is a, and this is one of the things that, that we struggle with in no different from um, doing things as per design and spec. Uh, doing things as per our safe work practice. So yes, it can. And that's why it's so very important to get the people in the field involved and get them in on board right off the hop. Because if they're giving you that feedback on, no, 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 we can't do it that way. And this is why we can't do it that way. Then we've got the practices and procedures in place that are actually workable and they make sense and they adhere to regulation. And they, they adhere to the laws and the standards that we are bound to abide by as employers. So I have a sim similar question to that. Um, is there, is there any way that safety regulations or safety rules can actually uh, improve a product or improve productivity or things like that? Like, um, I know everyone is usually worried about it uh, slowing down progress, but it, at least in research, I found that uh, it makes the research more repeatable because there are less mistakes. I'm wondering in industry, if there's something similar that could happen. You, you kind of answered your own question there, Robert. Well done. Um, it, in making it repeatable. So we put our, our safe work practices and procedures in place to make things repeatable so that we do it the same way every time. And if we find a way of doing things better, uh, we modify the practice. Um, the other way that, that I see that safety can actually make things uh, improve your productivity, improve your quality, is we put a hard, heavy focus on planning things ahead of time. And if we've planned it well ahead of time and everything is thought through, we've had an opportunity to, to take a really good close look at things. Plus we have our work plans in place. We have our practices ready to go and we've got everything lined up so that we know when our crews hit the field, they're going to need this, 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 and this. They need these resources. They need this many people. They need these tools. They need these pieces of equipment and, and they need certain pieces to be in place and done before they get there as well. So it, it helps the, the safety piece, again, not standing on its own, but standing with a number of other elements. It helps in the planning and it helps in the execution to make things go smoother so that it actually does get done well and right the first time around. We don't have to come back around two or three times or get partway through and come to a dead stop because we're missing pieces, we're missing parts, we're missing people. Right. Do we have any, any other questions? This is a unique opportunity to ask a, an industry expert. Um, so any, any questions anybody has, you could type them or let us know. I'm going to put in a shameless little plug. Um, we have been working with Fiona and USASC a little bit in, behind the scenes in putting together a meet and greet on January 18th. Uh, so if any of you folks are interested in attending that one, uh, please send a, a shout to Fiona or um, give me a, a shout and I will pass it around to our HR people that are stick handling that.
when you say give a shout, would you just like us to put in chat if we're interested or? <laughs> that will work, yep. Perfect. Okay, well, if uh, there aren't any further questions, um, I'd like to thank uh, Tricia for the great presentation. And for all the students, I'd like to remind you that there is a mandatory quiz and the session recording will be emailed to you shortly. And that tomorrow at 2.30, there is the uh, equity, diversity and inclusion session with uh, Sask Power. So I'd like to thank everyone for attending. And if we could um, all thank uh, Trisha, that would be great. So thank you very much. Hi, everyone. It's Fiona here. Sorry, Rob, I'm just um, interrupting you there. Um, Trisha, thanks so much again for that great presentation. Um, I am part of the uh, co-op coordinator here alongside Tracy and Kristen, and we really appreciate that you um, told everyone um, about this great uh, couple of um, events that PCL are actually um, hosting on the 18th. Um, just for all our students and grad students out there, there is two going to be offered by PCL. The first one is actually a site tour of the Murray Library, um, which is going to be held from 2.30 till 3.30. And then in the evening, um, also PCL are putting on an event at Louis from 5 till 7. And you can sign up for both events through CareerLink. And again, if you need any more information, please just give the engineering.coop at usask.ca email a shout and we'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, folks. Have a great afternoon. Thank you, everyone.